Okay, students, today I'm going to teach you about interpenetration of curves. This is module 4 in the book and it carries plus minus 20 marks. So I've got some few sketches on the board that I'm going to focus on. The first sketch is this one here. We'll deal with this one, then I'll come to this one, then third and the fourth one. This is all you need to know on interpenetration of curves. So the first thing is to know that interpenetration of curves is used in the industry, especially in sheet metal industry. So in sheet metal industry, they use this very much because that's where you find the pipes connected to one another. We have a main pipe, this is the standing pipe, connecting with this pipe of a certain diameter and this joining pipe into the main pipe of another diameter. So in the first example, this one, I've taken this to be maybe diameter of 50 and this one to be diameter of 50, same diameters. But this one I'll change, maybe I'll say the diameter of this one is 30, a bit smaller. So how do we do the interpenetration of a curve? We need to make sure that we locate a point at which the two pipes that are joining together meet. At that point, that is where the interpenetration of the curve is. So this is, if it comes in the exam, this is going to be 15 marks, 15, and those two are another two different types that will come in the exam, but one of the two types is coming. They can either ask you for a T-section or the, the fork end, the one on the far end there. Then when we come to these two examples here, I'm just trying to explain to you that you can have a round pipe joining with an hexagon pipe. That's why I drew this shape here. This pipe here joining into the main pipe is an hexagon pipe. From the top view, we'll see the round pipe, which is this main pipe. And this is the hexagon pipe we are going to change also. This pipe of the hexagon we have to rotate and you'll see that this will be a solid line on the hexagon when we rotate. So I'll start with the first part. To do the interpenetration of the first part, you have to copy the drawing as it is. And remember that the red circles are not going to come with the question. You must draw the red circles yourself. As long as you know this is a round pipe, you need to draw a circle on this side. If the connection is coming from the right hand side, you draw the circle on the right hand side. Also, you need to have the front and the top. Whether the top is on top or it's down, it depends with the, whether it's first angle projection or third angle projection. So what I'll do, I'm going to start with this pipe of the same diameter as the main pipe. And that's why when joining them, it's starting on the corner here by the center line. Because this is the same diameter as the main pipe. So when you have such a situation, you need to know that when we are drawing the curve of interpenetration here, it's going just to be straight lines. Okay, it's not going to be curvy because we are joining a pipe of the same diameter as that one. But when we come to this pipe coming into the main pipe at an angle, or even if it was coming straight, but if the diameter is different, you have to know that it is going to be a curve, it's not going to be a straight line. Okay, so the first thing you must do is to divide this circle that you have drawn into 12 divisions. We open the compass. Put the compass here, strike here, strike here, with the radius of the circle. When you put your compass here, you strike here, you strike there. When you put your, you strike here. When you put your compass here, you strike here, you strike here. When you come here with your compass, you strike here, you strike here. We use the uh, radius of the circle, okay, which is the same thing you must do here. With the radius of the circle, you put here, you strike here, you strike. You come here, you strike, you strike, you are here, you strike. You strike, you come here, you strike, you strike. Then you can number them clockwise. Any connection coming from the right hand side, you must always number them clockwise. So you start with the main center line, you say this is number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay? Eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve into twelve divisions. When we come here, because we are numbering in that direction, you must remember that this circle here will be rotated clockwise 90 degrees. So when we rotate this circle on the front view by 90 degrees, number one is not going to be here anymore. Number one is going to be there because we are rotating clockwise 90 degrees. So it's number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, seven, eight, nine, 
10, 11, 12. All the numbers are going to shift. And then when we talk of the left-hand side connections, we are going to rotate clockwise. We need to have a circle here of the same diameter as that one. Okay, so let me say I have this circle here. Okay, and when we number any left-hand side connection, we must all the time number anti-clockwise. So we start with the main line. This is the main center line here. You can say number one, then divide into 12. We divide into 12. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. You number anti-clockwise. As long as it's a left-hand side connection, anything that comes from the left, you number like that. Then to get the numbers here, you have to know that this top part is lining up with that and this with that. Then you number here, 12 divisions again. Number one was here. When we rotate anti-clockwise, the circle, number one is going to be here. Then number two here, number three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. That is all you need to know. If the connection is on the left, when you number the circle, you have to rotate it anti-clockwise if the connection is on the left. If the connection is on the right, we number it clockwise and we rotate clockwise all the numbers from the front to the top view here. And that is how we are going to get the curve of interpenetration here. When I talk about this one here, it's a left-hand side connection. But this is an hexagon pipe. So if I use this as my number one, this corner here will be number two. Then I'll have number three. Then I'll have number four, then number five, then six. But what you need to remember is that when I rotate this hexagon anti-clockwise, because it's on the left, what is going to happen is the corners will be here. I think you know that the corners of the hexagon will be like that. Let's make it big, because it must be lining up like that. So the corners will be coming here, it's flat. Then you bring the corner to the center, and then, and there, and there, yeah. That's how it's gonna sit, because number one was here. So when you rotate 90 degrees anti-clockwise, number one will be here. Then it's number two, number three, number four, number five, number six. That is how we do it. Make sure that the center line is lying in your face. Okay, but the other thing to remember is that when you have a circle, which is a, a square, or a hexagon pipe joining into a round circle, you have to introduce some points, even one point here or two points. So if I introduce point one, point two, any distance of your choice, which is going to be here and there, you can name it A and B. This can be A, this can be B. This can be A, B. Even at the bottom here, you need to have one, two. It's A, B. This side, it's A, B. It's your own choice or, the, or your own distance. When we come here, just after 1, you can see between 1 and 6, or between 1 and 2, there's A, B. Between 1 and 2, there's A here, there's B here. That's A, that's B. Then I can do here or just leave it because it's the same points I will have here. Then on this other side, between 1 and 6, between 1 and 6, there's A and B. Then the same distance you used here, you mark from 6 there to there. It's A and B. From 1 to A is the same distance from 1 to A. From A to B will be the same distance from B to A. Then that's enough, even if you don't do here. When we come here, you can only do one side. You can, you can ignore that or do one side here. But the secret of these types of interpenetrations is that um, we must always remember that if it's a right-hand side connection, we number clockwise. And when we want the same step on the top view, we rotate all our numbers. 90 degrees clockwise, which we have done here. So let's get the interpenetration of the first pipe. This pipe faces that pipe. You have to draw the line through the divisions. This is number one, construction line. Number two, pass through number 12. Then you have three passing through 11. Then it's four passing through 10, which is a center line already there. Five is with nine, passing through nine. 6 is going to pass through 8, and then it's 7, which is the bottom line. Then you come here, you do the same. There's my number 1. When I come with 1, when it hits the circle here, you go with the line up, which I've shown. You go with this line up. 
and then when you go on this line, it's passing through one and seven. So as you go with this line up, it must meet with seven coming here at that point, and you go further up, it meets with one at that point. So you have point one, point seven. Okay? Then when we go to number two, let's go clockwise. One, then two. But two is going to pass through six. Check. When it hits the circle, you go up. That is number two and six. Where is two here? There is two, which is also passing through 12. There is the point there. Then six is here passing through eight. There is your point there, where they meet. Then I come to three, passing through five. When it hits the circle, you take your lines up. This is number three and five. When we come here, there is five also covering nine. They are falling in the same point. Then I go to three. Uh, five is with three, which you can see. When we come here, you are going to go to three, which is passing through 11, and there is the point. Then the last point is number four, which comes here, because this is the same diameter as that, so it starts from the center. Then you go up, and there is number four. And being that they are the same diameter, you use a ruler to join the point, so meaning that this point ruler straight line. Then from here to there, you use a ruler straight line. Okay, this shouldn't be here. That is how they will do the interpenetration of that pipe. Okay, as long as they are the same diameter, please remember to do that. I'm going to do this pipe on the left. Same things, as long as my numbers are correct, I'll get the interpenetration. There's one coming down, then it's two with uh, 12. Parallel, whichever angle the pipe is sitting at. Then 11 is with 3. Then 10 is already there, which is the center with 4. 5 is with 9. And then 8 with 6. And then it's 7. You come here, you do the same. How do you do the same? This, okay, this one is in line with the, the big circle here. Yeah, that's how I do. Then when I come with number one here, there is number one on the center. When it hits the circle, I go with this line up. There is number one. But it also passes through seven, so it needs to meet with seven there. Then we go to number two. We are numbering anti-clockwise. I'll go to two and six. When it hits the circle, it's going to be this inside. You go up. Two. There is two. Six is at the bottom with eight, there. Then it's three with five. When it hits the circle, you go up. It's gonna be inside, straight. What is this one? Three with five. When we are here, it's three, which is this one. Five is passing through nine. There's the point. Then our last point to use, we can work with one half because these are symmetrical. You know, one is here, one behind. Then you come to number four. When it hits the circle there, you go up. That is line four. And that is the center line. This center line coming from there. Number four. Of which number four here will pass through ten there. This one is a curve, not a straight line. So use freehand sketch and connect. This shouldn't be here. That is the second interpenetration. Fifteen marks if you are to do that. Next one, quickly. Same things I'll do here. This is left hand side connection. I've already done the numbers. And my point I'm emphasizing again. If you have a round pipe with any other shape, square, octagon, triangular pipe, whatever, as long as it's joining with the round pipe, you need to introduce some divisions between the sides because we need to have a very accurate curve. If we just use one, two, three, four, five, six, the curve won't be accurate because the points here will be scattered. And that's why we introduce those divisions there. So I'll start with number one, which is this one, coming straight there. Leave it. You come to A and A, straight. Then it's B through to B. Then we have two and six, which is the black line, two and six. Then we come here. Okay, there's a center line. You can even use your center line if you want. This one, you can use center line. And you can number it whichever, maybe C and C, which is also going to be here, but in any way. Three and four, uh, five. 
this one, then it's B and D, then lastly is A to A, then the last point is number 4, let's draw it nicely, there is number 4, and make sure you also project number 4, then you come here, let's start with 1, where is 1, 1 is here passing through 4, when it hits the circle you go up to meet with 4, to meet with 1, because it's 1 and 4, this is 1 and 4, 2 points, after 1 I'm going anti-clockwise, the next point is A, A, there is the line for A, A, where is A, A here, it's this A and that A, draw a line, when it hits the circle you go up, there is your A, there is your A from the bottom, then next after 1, after A is B, B, these are the additional points we need, that's B. Where's B? There is line B. The B from the bottom is this one. Where they meet, that's the point. Then last point is what? Two. But two is passing through three. There is our line two and three line, the one inside. So let's say it's passing like that. It's gonna pass here and there. This is two and three. Where is three and two? There is two passing through six. I'll go with this line and then I'll have it here. Where is 3? 3 is here passing through 5. You are going to put the black line here and get your line here. The point there. Okay, that is how you do it. But we have the center line. I, I think you can see the center line. It's passing through what? That is the black center line. It's passing between 2 and can be a straight line because how you gonna connect these two points is just with a straight line. Okay. Even if we say two and three, when we come here between two and three, it's on that line. The point will still be here and there. So according to the interpenetration, it will be a straight line here, and then you do a curve. And you do a curve. And then you have the line. This piece shouldn't be. Then this solid line will go all the way to there, the next solid line must go all the way to there. That is if you have a, another different shape of a pipe coming. Okay, the reason why I didn't use the top numbers like 5 and 4, it 5 was falling through 3 when I went there up. When you check here, it's 5 and 3, so it's already dealt with. Even if you were to do 5, uh, it was going to meet with that same one thing. So you just leave it. That is how it goes. Then the other two types of interpenetration, this one is called a T connection or T end connection. This one here is called a fork end connection. So they can either ask for a fork end or a, a T connection. So let me do the one with a T connection. To do the T connection, you look at what is given. They always give you the front and the top. Then once you are given those, you have to make sure that this arc here is correct. They will give you the radius of this arc. You must make sure if this is arc 10, you must move this line up by 10. You must move this line out by 10. And at the point there, that's where the radius is. If this side again out by 10, you do a center line, then up by 10, center line. Where they meet here, that's the center for that up. So copying the drawing, you have to go to module 2, is the geometrical construction. Even if you are copying the fork end, there, there's a lot of geometrical lines that are needed that side. It's not just to copy it. Okay, when I come to a geometrical construction and we're talking about this drawing, there is an arc here, this one here. I know it's the same thing. And then there is an arc here. Coming that side. But these two arcs, they are, they are on this line here. I think this line was at 45 degrees from that point, if I remember. So how do I get the first arc? Move this line out by 45, uh, by the radius of this arc. Let's say this is R40. You move this line out by 40, you have this line. Then this one, you bring it parallel to, to that 45 line, bring it by 40, then bring. Then where they meet here, that's the center for this radius. So it's parallel line. 
40. If I need to do this one, maybe it's R24. It's touching here, so I go out by 24, then I have a fence line, then it's touching this line, I move it inside by 24, then where they will meet here. That is the center for this arc. So you need to know that is how we do uh, the shapes. So let's now do the interpenetration of those two, and then once I cover these two, it means that you will be able to answer any question on interpenetration of case. When we come to the T section, there's a back end and the front end of the top view. This is our top view. So the front end is here, which is similar to the back end, which means that you can either work here or work here because they are straight here and straight here. But if here it's straight and then there it's changing the shape, let's say it's going that way, that way, that way, then we have to work both sides, at the back and the front. So in this example, I'm going to assume that it's the same in front and at the back. But the minute you see the front edge here is different from the back edge here, you know that there will be two curves here. There's a front curve which will be outlined, taken from this edge, and there's a back edge here which will give us a hidden detail curve here. The same way I'll do here is the same way we're going to do at the back, if it's a different shape at the back. Okay, so let's assume that it's just a straight, straight line. The first thing is to identify the center line. Then from the center line, you use any, any distance of your choice. One, two, three, four, and two, five. One, two, three, four, and two, five. This is number zero, number one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Any spacing of your choice, because the more the, the spacings are close to each other, the closer the lines of interpenetration or the points of interpenetration. So the first thing is, you, if it's like this, it's symmetrical. You either choose to work on the left or you choose to work on the right. So in my case, I'm going to work on the left hand side. I'm going to take my compass, that is the first step, once you do the division of the top view. Take your compass from the center of the joining solid. This is a joining pipe, okay? From there to zero, you always start at the center of this pipe. From here to here, then you draw an arc and to the center line. This is the arc, the first one here. Then from here you take your line up. And to where it hits here, so this line will go up from here. When it hits there, you take your line to the right hand side. So I'll put the arrows. We will do the same to all the points. Then to get the interpenetration of a point, you need to come back to the division, to the number. So this is the arc for zero. So come back to zero and go up until that line meets with the horizontal line here. That is point zero on the interpenetration. Then from here to number one, division number one, you draw an arc and two here. This arc, there. Then you go up, vertically up, and two it hits the line, the arc, then you draw this line going that way. Then this back to the division one here, it's for one, go up, get your point. We are supposed to come also here because there is one and mark here, or else this same distance here and there is the same. So from here to here is the same as from here to, to there. This is point one, point one. Then from here to two, we continue the same way, up, until it hits there, you take your line there. Come back to number two, go up, and to where two hits there. This distance you can also mark here for that two. Then from here to three, you draw an arc, and two there. Go up, and two, you get the horizontal line. So when you find that you're already lining up with this edge, you can ignore four and five, you can choose, because already this last point is in line with that edge. I will leave on number three. So back to number three with a straight line until I get the point here. Then this same distance from here to here, I mark from here going there to align with that three. I think it will be something. So how do we get the interpenetration? Draw the curve from point three to two. Okay, this one must come and line up with this edge. Yeah, something like that. This one also from three, then it lines up with that edge. 
So as long as the last point is lining up with the edge, then you, there's no need of using those ones. We are we've got the interpenetration of the curve. That's how it works. But again, we were going to have another hidden one here. If this edge here is changed, let's say I change it now, the back portion. I tell you that it's going that way, then it comes here, then it goes up, then it goes that way. Already I've changed the design. So what does it mean? It means that, let me use a different color. You have to do the same here. From the center line here, do the markings. You can mark here. At every corner you must also put the mark. So I can use halfway here, and this one, and this one, and any space. This one, I'll go halfway here. This corner must be part of it. One, two, anything. We do the same at the back. It means we are going to have two curves here because the back is not the same as the front. Then in that situation, we have to work both right and left because this thing is different here and here. You take your compass at the center here, you can bring your arc here. Then from there, you go up. And two it hits the circle, then you come here. This is for the center line. You go up and two meet with the center line there. Then I go to the next division. From here to here, I draw an arc and two there. From there, I go up and two there, draw the line. Where was the number from here? You go up and mark a point. From here to there, you draw an arc and two here, you go up there. Leave the line. What was the division? It's this one. You go, you get the point there. If we need to use this one again from here to here, you draw an arc and through the center, then up. Already you see it's lining up. This will be your last line. Then from there is this division. You go up with that division. There is a point. Then we do the same on the left. Open your compass from here to here. Draw an arc. From here, go up. And two where it hits there, go there. What was then that division? This one here. Then you go up. And two where it hits there. Then from here to there, you draw an arc. Then you go up. And two where it hits there, you go that way. Come back to the division and two it meets with that line there. Then from here to here you draw an up, then up. When it hits there, you draw a line. Back to the division. There's a lot of lines. Then your last point is here. From here to here, bring down, then from there you go up. It's already lining up here. When you draw that line, you know that it's for this up and it's here. It meets the horizontal line. So the hidden part is the one that is starting here, the highest point is where you do the dashed line back here. There will be two curves like that. One is going to be an outline, which is the black one. The blue one at the back is going to be behind and that will give you a hidden detail curve. That is how you do if they come with different edges on the top view. I hope I've made a point because I did the back, the front part here, which gave me this, this one, this one here. It was going that way. Then I've done at the back the same way, but working both right and left because it's not symmetrical. Then I got the hidden part going up, up and down. Then you are done. You can get 15 marks for doing that. All right. So I think uh, the same method I've just shown you on the T section is the same method that we use on a fork end. So our fork end is this end here, is this drawing here, and it's got this front edge of the top view and the back edge, which are similar. So I'm just gonna work at the front edge. You mark one, two, three, and two, the corner four. One, two, three, and two, the corner four. But this corner, if you follow it nicely, it's leading you to that black point here. Even this corner here, when you bring it here, it's that solid line there. This dashed circle here is the hidden circle that is at the bottom. Okay, though I didn't do this part here, this was supposed to come but solid. It was going to have a solid line like this, and this one opening straight, straight down, solid. You can put. So the first thing is to number that is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. From there, you open your compass to zero. Let's work on the left. You draw an arc and to the center line. From the center line, you are going to go up. When it hits the curve here, that's why the curve must be correct. 
Then you take your line to the right hand side. Then back to the number zero. What would this to meet with that horizontal line here on the center? Then you go to number zero from the center to number one from zero. Draw an arc again to the center line. Go up straight until when it hits the curve, take your line there. What was that curve? Number one. Back to number one and then go straight up to meet the horizontal line for one. Okay? What is that horizontal line for one? It's this one. Yes. But there's one on the right which you can also align, align, align and mark on the right one. It's one and one. Then from the center to number two, you draw an arc and to the center line, go up and to it hits there, take your line there. What was that number two? Come back to number two all the way up, construction line. Get to point two. The distance from here to here should be the same two to this two here, if you come with that two. From there to number three, draw an arc and to there, take it up. When it hits there, you take it that way. What number was it? Three. Come with this line with number three until it hits that point there. Then the distance from here to here is the same distance here, which is to three. Somewhere there. Okay? The last point is number four. From here to four, already there is an arc coming and through here. So this arc, there is a line going, going up, taking us to here. Then draw the horizontal line. What is that number? Number four. Back to number four, that is the last part. When you go up with number four, this curve, it's going to take you up here to align with this black line. This distance from here to here is the same distance from here to number four. So it's four, four, three, three, two, two, one, one, zero. There is your curve of interpenetration. What you want to do is just to connect with freehand sketch and it's a curve. Join this one to that point, join the black part to that point. Then you get your 15 marks. If we had a different part here like this one, we were still going to work also at the back. So these are very important uh, sketches. That's why I said, let me just explain for you guys and then do a recording and then share with you. You need to watch this video thoroughly, go through the book and do the examples in the book. Start going through past papers, question number four in the question paper is interpenetration. Check through all the past papers that are on Google Classroom and then download and check question four. By now I expect that you are able to draw question three, which is orthographic drawings I did last week. If you are not sure of that, watch the videos I posted last week on orthographic drawings, auxiliary views. Because we have now covered three chapters. The first chapter was geometrical construction, which is the ellipse and hexagons and all that, it's 25 marks. Then I taught last week orthographic projection, which is those prisms and pyramids sitting at an angle, like right view or left view. This topic is now interpenetration and is the third chapter, which is also plus minus 20 marks. So I'll see you next week and I'm just hoping that you're going to find this uh, video very helpful. And should there be any questions, please make sure that you contact with me. Okay. So that's it from my side and uh, goodbye.